Good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode or broadcast of Marriage Mondays with Nick and Trina Bryson. It's always lovely to meet you here tonight to share a little bit of wisdom about knowledge and marriages and, and what thus says the Lord about your your, your marriage and, and the relationships that you are you're having. Um, and we'd just like to thank y'all for continually to join us on these Monday nights. <clears throat> so we're just going to get started and um, just continue to, to welcome people as they come in. Um, Ms. Latasha, Hyla Edwards, some of our um, Evergreen folk, right? Mm-hmm. All right, how y'all doing tonight? What else we got coming in? I can't tell who the first other pictures. There's folks coming in. With All right. Them, so come on, trickle on in. Um, in case we didn't mention it, we do represent Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. Um, we are a non-denominational Christian church. And um, we, our pastor is Bishop Finus Bush, Jr. Um, and, of course, we uh, are here representing the ministry. Uh, he and his wife, Denise Bush, have been uh, very influential leaders um, within our ministry as related to married couples. And we are here to um, expound upon that, give you resources, give you insights, get you thinking about how to improve your marriage relationship. Um, So we definitely appreciate the feedback. We've had quite a bit of feedback this week from um, the last lesson. So we love that it has been impactful um, to many of you and pray that these lessons will continue to be so. Um, We do... I want to remind you that these lessons are available afterwards on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to share with others. Um, And so we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, I know for me, I never get the full lesson just by listening to it once, whether it's uh, a sermon from church or even um, sometimes I go back and listen to the lessons that we have here. Um, So I do listen more than once. I will say that for you all to listen on YouTube um, is a good way for us to measure the reach. You know, how far these um, lessons are going, how many people it's reaching. Um, So we would love to have more views on YouTube um, just so that we know that the message is getting out there. Um, So we know that... um, quite a few of people that are within our physical reach are getting the lessons and benefiting from them, but we'd like to see that go even further. So please share um, the YouTube messages, uh, the message through uh, Facebook as well as through YouTube afterwards. Afterwards, share it with other people. So um, you're sharing it to your Facebook page now? I am. Okay. And I'll have to share mine afterwards since we're using my um, my account through the uh, church Facebook page. Also, if you are not a member of our church Facebook page, we encourage you to um, join. It is a um, public page. You know, you don't have to be a member of our church ministry in order to be a member of our Facebook page. So it's just a way for you to access um, content that the ministry puts out through various ministries, not just marriage ministry. We have a grief and loss ministry. That's very, a very powerful resource. Um, very few people, there are very few people that have not been touched by loss and grief. And so this ministry, uh, just like we give you tools for marriage, this ministry, the Grief and Loss Ministry gives you tools for dealing with um, loss and with grief, which can be very consuming um, if you don't have the tools to learn how to manage that grief. Um, and this, the morning, the stages that people go through, you need to be aware of it. That empowers you to be able to deal with it and kind of frame it and put it in perspective for you to move on in a positive way through life. Right. Yeah, so we certainly encourage you to um, put in to join our uh, church Facebook page, which is Crown Kingdom Cultural Center um, on Facebook. It's under group. It's a group page. And it's the page that we broadcast from for this um for marriage ministry, and um, one of the administrators will accept your uh, request to join, which will allow you to have access to the other um, 
ministry information, including the sermons that Bishop uh, Bush puts out, the Bible study lessons, um, and also any of the events that are going on at the church. Like we have a dance ministry workshop coming up on um, August 28th. It's open to the public. Um, and I mean, you don't even really need any dance experience. It's just an opportunity to get out, have fun, learn um, about how, you know, praise, worship, um, how to dance. So it's just an opportunity. There's a concert that night to kind of culminate it all. But um, we certainly encourage you to uh, just get it, just get in the know, to know what's going on and benefit in any way that you can. That's what we have it out there for. That was my PSA. Mm -hmm. All right, we're five minutes out there the hour. Um, normally when we start, it's about five minutes out there. And um, tonight's message um, that we're going to address in this and it's, the title is, Are You Married to a Stranger? Do you know the person you're married to? Most How people well would say you? yes right away. Why do you think they'll say that? Because they, you know, they figure, you know, I'm not married. I wouldn't be married if I didn't know the no person. person. Yeah. But it's a question that you need to ask yourself really throughout your marriage. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and we're just going to let the cat out of the bag. The person you're married to will evolve. From the person that you married or got to know as the as a younger version of themselves, because they are since they're evolving and through their evolution, they're going to learn more, become interested in different stuff, um, and just be kind of of a, a different kind of person, if I can say it like that. So you're saying you're not the same person you were when you were 25? No, that that Nick is not the same Nick. He was when he was 25. I look at some of my pictures and be like, what was that young dude thinking? What was he going, what was going through his mind at that time? <laughs> and that person is not the same person I am right now. So in order to, to, to get through that, um, this is, this is the basis of our conversation tonight. Mm -hmm. It's just, we're going to give you some things that you can do to, to grow with the person that you are, you're married to. Because when, when people grow apart, uh, that's when things start to, to get him involved in your relationship because now you're giving space to stuff. If if Trina's thoughts and, and her her ways are, are going in that direction, my thoughts and ways are going this direction, we got stuff that's building in between us. So we're not coming together. We're actually drifting apart. And people say that all the time. Um, often when people um, get divorced or they look at their marriage after a long period of time and they realize that they're just not on the same page and that their interests are different, where they're going, their future looks different. Um, I, we really feel like that comes from a lack of knowing the person that you should be growing with. Because people are going to grow and evolve and right. change. Um, I really don't think there's any way around that. Mm -hmm. People will change and evolve over time. The key is, will you do that together? Right. Will you um, allow each other to grow and mm -hmm. evolve? Will you be a hindrance to that? To where that your spouse may have some hidden and um, unmet um, goals right. and some um, unmet potential things that the marriage has perhaps maybe held them back from being able to do. And that's not an ideal situation. It's not. And so we want to make you aware so that you examine your own relationship, that you examine yourself and really pay attention to, you know, is your spouse able to live a fulfilled life attached to you? That's a, that's a good question, too. Are you able to live a fulfilled life, you know, in your, your marriage relationship? And if not, you, you need to make some adjustments so that that can happen. Your marriage should be an asset and right. you should be an asset to your relationship. Should not be a hindrance to one another. You want to find a way so that both people can, at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, look back and feel that their life was uh, purposeful, um, that the purpose God put inside of each person mm -hmm that they've been able that each person's been able to live a life that is true to that true to that and so let's we just want to take a minute today and kind of have a little bit of conversation just to get you thinking about thinking about it 
And we're just going to give you uh, some suggestions, some topics of, of discussion that you can actually explore yourself. Um, one thing is share your inner thoughts mm -hmm. with the person that you are married to. Uh, when you start to share your inner thoughts, that gives the person some idea like, oh, that person, now my spouse is thinking about that. So what can I do to to encourage this, this train of thought or what can I do to help her, I'm talking about my wife, um, even start to grow in the direction that, that she was trying to grow in. And with me being there for her, with her sharing those thoughts with me, that gives her, let her know that um, this is a safe place to, to put right. those thoughts. Absolutely. Because if it's difficult to be honest with yourself, um, it, or to be honest with someone else if you're not honest with yourself. And it can be a little scary sometimes to voice those inner thoughts if you're unsure of how those thoughts will be received. Right. So if you find your spouse to be a safe person for you to have conversation with, that gives you room to um, share those innermost thoughts with your spouse, which can actually help you sort through that. Um, depend as you ha if you build your relationship to a point to where both of you are comfortable being vulnerable, right. open with each other, honest, uh, honest, yeah, that's the important part of a strong, healthy marriage is the ability to be vulnerable and to have a safe place to have those conversations, even when you're not sure about what you're thinking. But to be able to share that with your spouse and not not be judged for it and not be uh, put down and um, pushed away from those thoughts automatically um, if it's something you're trying to think about and explore and grow. Right. And through your inner thoughts, the, the talk through your inner thoughts, uh, you can see if the, the, the thing that your spouse want to do, is it healthy for the marriage? Is it the right time for the marriage? Uh, does it work with the marriage? And then y'all go through those processes, and that's where you, you have a tendency to grow together and, mm -hmm. and make that decision together. And, and that's where the, the relationship stays uh, bonded through those agreements. I tell you, it's a, um, it can be real shaky if somebody is real selfish. Mm. Because if one person brings up um, you know, a thought they're having that might involve the family moving, and if, if that spouse is automatically shut down, so I'm not moving to where we can't even talk about it and explore it, you know, that's, that would be a selfish perspective. It is. You know, you can have that thought that you don't really want to move, move, but have the conversation and see where it goes. Yeah, go through the process. Because sometimes you'll find that in meeting, helping your spouse to kind of meet their goals and meet their needs is good for you too. Mm-hmm. So it's, you just have to be able to be open. Marriage is not a place for selfishness, for you to wear that selfishness in at the forefront of all your interactions. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do. So you have to be willing to have those conversations. And we've talked all through um, the past year or two that we've been um, sharing with you all. We've talked a lot about having those conversations to where each person's perspective is put on the table. And if you've been doing that all along, then you'd start to develop the skills that allow you to have those conversations that involve being vulnerable and maybe exploring ideas that hadn't been put out there before mm -hmm. to at least talk it through. And sometimes your spouse might be coming from left field, but there's a way yeah. there's a way for you to um, allow the two of you to have that conversation in private and confidence so that you can come to the best solution. And if it ends up that it's a, um, a thought or idea that's not healthy for the relationship or that's not healthy for your spouse individually, right. even there has to be a place for you to uh, walk through that with your spouse, not in a controlling way, but in a supportive way. And that takes some skills. I mean, that can be, that can be a tall order. It takes some skills. So even dealing with household issues is a good way, you know, these smaller things is a good way to practice how to communicate, how to negotiate, how to, you know, navigate those differences that naturally come up in a married couple's life. Yep, because your marriage will will evolve. 
I mean, the evolution of a person's growth is is a natural thing. But then we, we call it a natural, but we've learned that it starts in the spiritual realm first. Absolutely. So even when you're trying to make these decisions, you and your spouse need to pray about them first. Right. And then once that um, resolution happens in the spirit realm between you and your partner, then y'all get together and talking about them naturally, mm -hmm. then everything works out. Then you'll find out uh, whether you're in one accord or not, yeah. whether you're in agreement or disagreement. And one thing I can say, and you know, being a middle school principal, a lot of things occur amongst kids because they feel like they always got to agree with each other. If you don't agree with my point, then then we we going we we just gonna disagree and we gonna fuss and fight about this. What they need to learn that it's okay to disagree. It's right. really okay. Yeah. You know, it, it ain't think it's in, in your marriage. It's okay to disagree, but you you uh you agree to disagree, and then y'all come back and come back to that topic later when you could talk about it a little bit more. So even when you're when you're um going through this process, uh being disagreeable is not the right way, but be being able to say, okay, I, I appreciate that thought, mm -hmm. but I, I respectfully disagree with that. And then you can just come back and talk about it later. Say we'll table that thought and then we'll come back to it. Yeah, and the best thing to do too when there is um something that you can't come to a disagreement an agreement right away because you don't want to live in a place of disagreement with your spouse that's not going to work so the alternative to that is you may need to table it and say okay we're going to come back to this issue mm -hmm. and individually go pray about it look for more information on the topic and then when you come back to the table um, you will have gotten some kind of spiritual uh, resolve between you and God some or some direction between you and God and maybe even have more information to help the two of you to get on the same page because you must come to a point of agreement. Mm -hmm. You can't leave it at a, as a disagreement. Now, I'm okay with the agree to disagree temporarily, but right. we have to get to a place of agreement. Mm -hmm. All right. Continuing to learn who your partner is so you don't wake up one morning and... and wake up next to a stranger because I've heard people actually say, who am I married to? I've heard that question asked. And that's re one reason why I, why I came up in my spirit to talk about this. Um, one thing you can do is continue to date regularly. And that's one thing that we have actually put into practice is we date weekly. There are not very many weeks we go without having a date night on a Friday or Saturday or, or Sunday. One of those days we're going to go out on a date. Mm -hmm. And it helps us stay connected right. with each other through the dating process. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, the dating process works. It, you know, most people dated <laughs> prior to getting married. And what happens is you're spending time focusing on each other. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in dating that too often doesn't happen in marriage. Is you, Many people forget that you have to nurture and take care of your marriage relationship with some undivided attention. And that's what those dates allow you to do is to focus on each other, to focus on where you're going together, even to look back on where you've been and to uh, just to make sure you you're connected. Right. It's so easy to just keep running, living in the same house, sleeping in the same bed, being eaten dinners together or apart and still not have quality time together. So if you don't intentionally make time for the two of you to spend together a lot of times it won't really happen you can be in the same space and be worlds away from each other miles apart mm -hmm. miles miles apart. that's very easy to do and so dating allows you to be in each other's face talking um sharing space sharing thoughts and then when you know that it's coming up you get yourself in that position because sometimes there's some things you can bring up on that during that time that you're uh, both relaxed and enjoying each other, it's an easy time to have uh, conversation, mm -hmm. it, or even after the date, um, after you've reconnected and doing that frequently with some frequency, that allows you to keep your relationship strong. It's easy to let time pass and to become disconnected, even though you're physically in the same same space. So I see a question. How important do you feel fun is in the dating process? Uh, it's very, it, it is important. It depends on your, um, you and your spouse, what you guys enjoy doing. 
it's certainly you definitely want your um dates to be fun people have different personalities i think we have to keep that in mind Mm -hmm. um but you know your spouse do what allows the two of you to connect and enjoy one thing too that i did want to mention i'm glad you asked that question um stefan Okay, I was trying to see who asked the question. I um, thought it was him, but I didn't want to call the wrong name. Okay, um, <laughs> but I'm glad you asked that question, Stephen, because um, one thing I wanted to say is in staying connected or um, what's the topic we're talking about? Like getting, making sure that um, you and your spouse are um, being intimate mm-hmm. with your inner thoughts is allow yourself to do dates based upon what the other person is interested in. So, for example, if you came to me and said, uh, oh, I think we should go zip lining on our next date. Well, my first instinct is going to be, no, that's a no. First one. That's going to be my first instinct. Um, But in all honesty, if it's something that he really wants to do, I'm not going to prevent him from doing it with his friends, first of all. Um, But in the interest of the relationship, it is a good idea just to try things together that the other person is interested in. And so I might go with him to watch him zip line. Not going to say I'm going to try it, but, <laughs> but if he wants to try it, then let's, let's go, let's go do it. Let's try that. So sharing interests is, is extremely important and um, having fun is important too. I mean, who wants to be in a relationship with somebody you can't have fun with? Yep, just got to find out what the fun, what fun is, is between, for y'all. For y'all, yeah. yeah. Between y'all two. I mean, fun for some couples might be ziplining together. Yeah, fun see, that's not ones, fun to me. Might be going to a, a, a paint party. That would be fun to you me. You know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't checking for your fun factor because I kind of know what you like to do to just have fun. Just getting feedback. But, you know, there, 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 there are different levels of fun. And, you know, another point we're going to bring up tonight, I'm not getting off it yet, but there are things that your partner may want to experience that you may be like, mm, that might be a good experience for you, but I'm not comfortable with that. Like she was talking about with the zip line, you know, should it hinder me from experiencing that something I want to go through and do because she don't want to do it? No. Go for it. No, you go do that. As long as you come back. You know, well, don't do as long so as you're crazy. honoring our relationship yeah. throughout the course of it, mm-hmm. now, I ain't trying to tell you to go do that with somebody else on a date with somebody else. That's no, just no, no. Crazy. I'm just saying something that may endanger your life. You know, get too dangerous, and you're not in agreement about that. that oh, might be different. okay. Like somebody might want to mo- go do motorcycle jump out the plane. Riding. Okay, okay. We, ain't, you know, that ain't that's not but, good for our relationship. Well, not for us, but a lot of people enjoy that. But for them, I'm talking about for us right now. We, we we talking to the people, but for us, me jumping out of airplane, not a good idea. Well, that ain't something you want to do, though, is it? I don't know. One day, you know, I might think about it. I can't say that I would be opposed to that. I mean, as long as you're safe with it, people jump out of airplanes all the time. I just won't be doing it with you. There's a thought. I don't we have just a problem have... with you doing it. I mean, I'm not trying to control you like that. But I, hey, that's good. That's good to know. But I ain't going to say I'm going to jump out of an airplane anytime soon. I'm not doing that. Ain't right now. Do that. Nope. But I did have an experience that I know she would not like to do that I went with with a couple of my friends uh, about three weeks ago. We went white water rafting. It was the best time of my life. But I not, I know that's not something that she would like to do. Not at all. So, you know, we had those different things and um, we had to do. Look at my brother-in-law talking about, let's go now. Oh, he just showed it. Gosh. He probably already done a few times. <laughs> well, we might have to explore that brother-in-law. But uh, yeah, those those are new experiences and things y'all like to do. Mm, okay, <laughs> you know you ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you can blame me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know, as you continue to 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 grow and evolve in your marriage, you know the things that you do need to be something that's agreed upon, and and you continue to explore and grow with each other because that's what it's all about. Growing, growing old and gray with each other is is the best part of, of living. Now, I'm, I'm to that point now where I can see that now is, you know, just enjoying being with each other. You know, like I told, I think I sent you a text message last week mm-hmm. when I said, I, 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 you know, I don't went from loving being married to her to really enjoy being married to her. 
And me and one of my my uh, the the chairman of my deacon board, I said that to me, say, you know what, coach, that that's a good statement. And just being enjoy being married is another level. It is of, of enjoying your your spouse. You know, you can like being married, you can love being married, but I enjoy at this point right now being married. So. That's I enjoy being married to you too. Well, we in agreement. We have put in some work, and yes, it has, ma'am. and it has been worth it because Dad and I always been on testimony. No, no, <laughs> but it definitely is now. So, and I, and it was worth it. It was yep. definitely worth the work that we put in. So you don't want to wake up one day and, and be married to a stranger. You're living next to a stranger. You're, you're you're looking at a stranger on a daily basis. Learn to communicate with each other and talk to each other. Get to know each other on a different level. I would say study each other. I would say to show interest in your spouse, even if um, if you're unsure if your spouse has some things about you that about themselves that they haven't expressed to you, ask them. Mm-hmm. Just show interest, and you might be surprised at the response that they will give you. That maybe there are some inner thoughts and inner desires that they haven't expressed to you. Make yourself available to hear, to listen without judgment. Just to listen out of curiosity um, and out of genuine concern because you want your spouse to be a whole, fulfilled person and you want to facilitate that. You can't make it make that happen for your spouse, but you can facilitate it and um, make your relationship a safe place for your spouse to be able to grow and develop and to not feel stifled by your relationship. All right. Or by being married to you. So we hope what we've what we've talked about and discussed has some um, effect, or you learned something tonight about what we've talked about, and mm-hmm. and hopefully got some um, information that can help you and your partner uh, move your marriage to the next level, or just understand that that's is what if that's what you do, just continue to do that, and your marriage will continue to progress and and be what God intended for it to be. Yeah. So remember to um to. Go to Facebook, not Facebook, what's the other one? YouTube, and um, review this lesson if you're interested in hearing it again, um, just to keep it in your thinking and to share it with others as well. So, And if you have ideas for topics, we are always open to that. Um, occasionally, we have gotten people to um, give us ideas, for uh-huh. some good ideas for right. lessons that we have been able to share with you all um, on this platform. So we encourage that. Yeah. All right. Well, like we stated in the beginning, y'all share this with your friends and family, whoever you think may need it. You know, there are people that you know to that that you know that that need these lessons. Mm-hmm. And like my wife said, we always go back and listen to them, and they are still informative to me. I thought I'd go back and listen to what I've said. Oh yeah. So always. with that said, it's that time. I'm the lady and the coach. We love y'all. Good night.